Lamar Jackson is ready to take his next step in his NFL career. When speaking to reporters on Monday, Lamar Jackson was asked about what his next goal is, most likely of trying to be a Super Bowl champion, and this is actually what he had to say. You know, I said that April 26th, whenever we were drafting, whenever I was drafted, I said that, you know, and I meant that. Um, but, you know, uh, this, the, this the highest level of this, of this game, you know, we play. So you got to go out a champion. That's what I want to be labeled as a champion, you know, not just MVP here and there. Like, I want to be a champion. So the question is posed in this way because this is the end of Lamar's contract in three years. Now, obviously, I assume he'll be extended. But let's just say for the sake of this conversation, uh, the next three years, do you think Lamar Jackson will lead the Baltimore Ravens <coughs> to a Super Bowl victory? That's a tough question. Uh, I think... Uh, That's what we do around here. Ask I know. Tough a tough question. And uh, <laughs> I would say there's a high probability, but I can't say for sure because Kansas City is there. Uh, and Kansas City has uh, won two out of the last four and uh, two in a row, and they're going for that three-peat this year. And the road to the Super Bowl, I believe, will go through them or they will be on the road and they'll have to win uh, at home. And uh, I think uh, Baltimore may have had their best chance this past year. They played them tough. They only lost 17-10. to 10. They had two chances in the red zone there and made turnovers in both of them. It cost them big time. They can't make those kinds of turnovers. Expect to win the, uh, the uh, AFC championship game. So I... Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I would love to see them win it. I like Lamar Jackson. I, I, I listened to that uh, interview that they had, and, uh, you know, uh, John Harbaugh's got his back. He says his vision for Lamar is to be uh, remembered as the greatest quarterback in NFL history. I, I, that's a stretch a little bit. I mean, he's already played a number of years. He is only 27, so maybe he can uh, start winning a lot of Super Bowls. I mean, you got to win seven to be – at least seven to be considered the greatest of all time nowadays uh, with Tom Brady setting that benchmark uh, for uh, the other players. And Jackson came out and said, hey, you know what? I appreciate he's got my back on that. It gives me fuel to uh, do better. Uh, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, uh, keep trying to get better, keep trying to win these games, keep trying to reach that goal. And he said, Brady is the GOAT. I'm not at this point, but it's motivation. I appreciate that. I'm still on my way, and he is on his way. I mean, he's only 27. Uh, in 2023, he had career best and completion percentage, 67%, uh, 3,678 yards. That's a lot more than he generally passed for. He had a new uh, offensive coordinator in Todd Munkin, and uh, they actually did quite well. I, I think they did – they thought they would had a – they were bringing in a more elite wide receiver group. I don't think it really turned out to be that. It really, uh, Zay Flowers turned out, to, I think, to be the the best receiver in that group. And they had OBJ in there. They had, uh, who's the guy from the Patriots that they got? The uh, Nelson Aguilar. Aguilar, who I never thought was that great. But uh, he played okay for them. Uh, I still think they're lacking that number one receiver. I, I don't think they've. They've got that uh, what that big time playmaker on the uh, and the wide receiver group, but uh, you know I think there's reasons to believe that uh, Jackson hasn't reached his ceiling yet. He's uh, as I said, he's won two MVPs. Uh, he's the youngest player to ever win two MVPs. He was the uh, uh, youngest player to win the uh, Heisman Award too. So he's gotten some great uh, accolades there, but not the one he really wants. Manning, Breeze, and Elway were all older than Jackson before they won their first Super Bowl. Uh, he says patience is the key. Only a few quarterbacks have won the Super Bowl recently. A lot have not, and that's true. I mean, you have Mahomes. He's been winning those Super Bowls. I need to focus on what I can control and go from there. Kansas City remains to be the team to beat. Uh, it's, the first, it's their first game of the season, so it'll be interesting to watch that. I think the, now that uh, the uh, training camp has started and Lamar's back, he was out for a little bit of uh, an illness injury. That, well, it wasn't an injury, but he was ill. And now he's back. It seems like the intensity's increased in the in the preseason for the uh, uh, for the Ravens. Uh, 
he says iron sharpens iron. And I think he means that, you know, we have a good offense. We also have a great defense when we play against each other. We're uh, trash talking to one another. We're trying to make one another better. So I think they got the right attitude. I think Lamar is focused on the MVP, uh, not just the MVP, but the Super Bowl. And um, I'd like to see him get one. I think everybody would. When you have a talent like Lamar Jackson, it's like this guy is something we've never seen before. He has, he has the athleticism of any position. He's better than Michael Vick. He's better than Cam Newton when it comes to athleticism. Does he have the strength and the body build of a Cam Newton? No, he's a little bit more, I guess you want to call it thin. Cam Newton was more bulky. Although Lamar Jackson has packed on, I think it's what, 15 pounds in the offseason. So in case he does take those big time hits, well, you know what? He could, he could take more of those. I have come around to Lamar Jackson probably about last year before he won his MVP, to, to start last year's season. Uh, because what I saw from Lamar Jackson up to that point was an underdeveloped passing game, and when it mattered, when he needed to pass the ball, it was not it, it was not given to a level of, of success. Perfect example is against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Brady's last season. During the first half, they primarily focused on passing the football. Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens were down. This was a Bucs team that was not very good. A battered offensive line, not a, not a great set of tight ends and weapons. Yes, Mike Evans was there, Chris Godden was there. But outside of those two, and up against a, a very good Baltimore Ravens defense, they could basically shut him down and make him ineffective. You know Brady is going to throw it to one of those two targets because the other targets just weren't that good, could not create separation, could not get open. And that year, they had the worst rushing attack in the NFL. So you know for a fact they were not going to run the football. But the Ravens focused primarily on passing the football and were down at halftime. In the second half, they ramped up the running game and I think threw it only eight times the entirety of the second half and took care of the Buccaneers like they weren't even an ounce of competition. And then Tom Munkin comes in. I think that's largely Greg Roman's scheme. Not a great pass first scheme. Excuse me, scheme. Not a great pass first scheme. What's or just passing scheme in general. Tom Munkin comes in. And we hear a lot of great things about how great Lamar Jackson's pass game is developing. That's great news. Lamar Jackson says he wants to throw for 6,000 yards. Great. We want to see it. I wanted to see how his passing game was really taking it to the next level. And that was the case this year. Best passing numbers of his entire career. Highest efficiency of his entire career. It was all looking great. And then it came to one particular game that was shocking. And that was the AFC Championship game. Because, yes, Lamar Jackson was improving his passing game, but it still wasn't his strength. Running the football was the Ravens' strength. The Baltimore Ravens themselves, that was their strength. And going up against a Kansas City team that could not handle the run very well. Hell, they just got beat the prior game against the Bills with the ground attack. Baltimore decided, you know what, we're going to run it, I think, six total times. Three times the running backs, if I'm not mistaken. Lamar had an opportunity to break free on the right side, but I don't know why he didn't just tuck it and run. He looked at the defender and eventually ended up getting tackled. You were playing into a scheme that was great against the pass, not great against the run, and Todd Munkin drew up a past first offense. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So in order for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens to get over the hump of at least making it to the Super Bowl, making it first off, which in of itself is very, very difficult, you got to have the right system. You have to play your strengths against their weaknesses, not, ironically, your weaknesses against their strengths. Munkin had it backwards. John Harbaugh could have fixed it. He's the head coach. So if he understood exactly what was going on, I would assume he would fix it, but instead let Todd Munkin decide what to do. Pass first against a pass great defense. Didn't make a lot of sense to me, but I completely agree with you. I think the entire NFL world agrees with you. Lamar Jackson has the talent, has the skill set, to win several Super Bowls. He's a two-time MVP. One-time unanimous MVP. He could have won it a second time if one person didn't vote for Josh Allen to be first. Otherwise, he would have received 50 votes. There you go. Two-time unanimous MVP. But that wasn't the case. It's all about competition. If this was an, if Lamar Jackson was an NFC quarterback, and he beats the crap out of a bunch of NS, NFC teams already, if he was an NFC quarterback, I have no doubt in my mind he would have been to a Super Bowl already. I have no doubt. Because what we saw from Lamar against the number one team in the NFC, and this is a third and 16 play to end the first half. 
I mean, he's just bobbing and weaving through a San Francisco 49ers defense, cutting left, cutting right, going up the field. That's the Lamar Jackson I want to see. That's the Lamar Jackson I wanted to see against the Kansas City Chiefs. But we didn't. We saw a pass-first offense. We saw a pass-first scheme against a, a great pass defense with Steve Spagnuolo of the Kansas City Chiefs. It didn't make a lot of sense. So Lamar's team, you could even say, sabotaged the chances mm-hmm. of the Ravens making it to the Super Bowl. So you say the the uh, Kansas City loss was more about the coaching than it was about the uh, players. Ha- I mean, they did have two turnovers in the red zone. Correct. And one was a pick six thrown into triple coverage on a crazy play and Zay Flowers making a rookie mistake and uh, LeJarrius Sneed making a very heads-up play. But we have to take account uh, that, think about this, the Ravens for the past few seasons have been the number one rushing team or at least the top three rushing team in the NFL. Why are they doing a pass-first scheme against a great pass defense? <clears throat> it doesn't make a lot of So in that case, yes, I do say that Todd Munkin came in with the wrong scheme, the wrong game plan to say, you know what? Early down passing. Why not? And then on top of that, to not use play action, which the Chiefs were not good at already during the regular season. They were great against no play action defensively. Yeah. Well, with play action, well, they, they were not been, a great you know defense. What? Here's where the Patriots uh, shined in uh, playoff games. When things weren't going so hot in the first half, they made adjustments at halftime. Correct. And they usually uh, wound up winning those games, and that's what Baltimore's got to learn how to do. The passing game isn't working against a team that's got a great passing defense and they're not so hot against the run. Let Lamar run it. Yep. Uh, he's a great runner. Or hand it off. They've got a good running game to go along with his uh, ability to scramble and make something out of nothing. I think we have to take account of some of the losses they had because they lost two starting offensive linemen in uh, Morgan Moses and John Simpson. They got a rookie right tackle in right now and a brand new left guard. I think that could be a problem. Now, they do have some of their main pieces. Ronnie Stanley, of course, is a tremendous left tackle. But some of these losses, I think, are going to be pretty detrimental if you because the Ravens have dealt with a lot of injuries. Tyus Bowser they lost this year, uh, this upcoming season, but he he dealt with an injury last year anyway. It was out the entire season. Patrick Queen, a great linebacker, he's gone to the Steelers. Jadavian Clowney hurt Joe Burrow, sent Joe Burrow to the hospital, said goodbye for the rest of that season. He, he, uh, he left to be on the Panthers. There's a couple of pieces here that I'm not great about. Now they tried to replace... Uh, their defensive back uh, with Nate Wiggins, the rookie, who we each had in the, going in the first round. So I, I think that they're trying to replace some of their defensive pieces, but all around their defense, I think is going to, I think it's not going to be, you know, historic defensively like it was last year. And, and I said this a number of times last year on the show. I said the, the, the numbers and the efficiency that the Ravens defense this past season, the 2023 Ravens, their defense was very reminiscent of the 2000s Ravens, who we talked about recently on the show, where they gave up, I think, one offensive touchdown in the playoffs. And think about what they did to the Chiefs. This was a team that put up 17 points. The offense just couldn't get going because they had the wrong scheme out there. Now, Lamar, this is, this is where I'm going to critique Lamar just a little bit. There were opportunities for him when the pocket broke down a little bit or when the play wasn't there, he just stayed in the pocket. It was very <coughs> Justin Fields-esque where he would just stay in the pocket and just wait for something to happen instead of doing what he normally has done and just go, run, drive, do something. Don't stand in the pocket. That's what Justin Fields has had problems with. He has had some of the highest time to throw uh, in the NFL, but we see his numbers and they're like... These are not great numbers. It's because all he's doing is just standing there a lot of the time. If Lamar would just take off a couple of those times in the playoffs, maybe we're talking about a different outcome of the game. But I think if, if, if Todd Munkin did a better job game planning, we very well could have already seen Lamar in the Super Bowl. Going up against a 49ers team, he beat the crap out of yeah. earlier in the season. Yeah. So I, I think that it really depends because they have a very difficult schedule. They open with that rematch against the Chiefs. Will Todd uh, Will Todd Munkin finally correct his mistake and think, well, we just got Derrick Henry. We lost a, we lost Gus Edwards, we lost J.K. Dobbins, and we got Derrick Henry. You know what? Not bad. Let's try to run the football. Maybe that'll work this time. Yeah. Maybe they'll do that. Then they, week two, it's easy. You're up against the, the Raiders at home. Then you're at Dallas, home against the Bills, at Bengals. 
Those are three pretty tough games. And then you uh, skip two games against the Commanders and Bucks. Then you go over at Cleveland. Their defense was number one last year. Can they repeat that? Home against Denver. Then home against the uh, the Bengals. At Steelers. I've been ripped on for criticizing the Steelers. Are they going to be good? I have no idea. Well, generally, they so. play well in the division. Uh, the, the division games, generally, they're very close in that division. Yes, the, the Steelers and Ravens, no matter who the quarterbacks are, they're normally close. Uh, at the Chargers, I think their defense is going to be improved with a better coach. I think Jim Harbaugh is going to do a number on, on that defense as well as change the offensive scheme so it's not super reliant on Justin Herbert. Try to ground and pound a little bit. Home against the Eagles, that I think will be a good game because I don't think the Eagles are going to implode like they did last year. And then you then you have a, a Week 14 bye week at Giants, home against the Steelers. And then you, you wrap it up pretty difficult, I think, at Texans and home against the Browns. I think some of those games are going to be pretty close. Uh, they are favored in 14 of these games. They went 13-4 and four last year. And that's with a relatively poor and growing offensive wide receiver core. Now, Zay Flowers, I saw a clip today. Zay Flowers catching a deep ball, and it was a sight to see, absolutely. I think Zay Flowers growing in the system will be fine. They lost Devin Duvernay, which is another piece of their depth. Now, I, I know he dealt with a couple injuries there. But all around, their offensive weapons are not great. They have Zay Flowers. They have Rashad Bateman. They have Tylen Wallace, who I also saw have a great catch in practice. They have your guy, Nelson Aguilar. Uh, they got uh, uh, Devontae Walker, who is Drake May's top guy at UNC. They have Isaiah Likely, who's, who's had some moments when Mark Andrews went out. He's had a couple nice moments. And then, of course, speak of the devil, Mark Andrews, Which one of the best, the tight, best ends. tight ends in the league. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes, Lamar has a couple nice pieces around. He has a nice budding star in Zay Flowers, a reliable piece in Devontae Walker at a UNC. It's just a question of win it within the scheme, because I think that's the key there. We saw the scheme screw over Lamar once, and honestly, we could argue screw him over previously because it was a very run-heavy scheme with Greg Roman. If we see a balanced scheme that makes sense against the competition. With adjustments when things aren't working. Absolutely. And we talk about, you, you mentioned the Patriots. 2018, they threw the playbook out because it wasn't working. The offense had nothing to do against the Rams in the Super Bowl. They threw it out, and they did the same play four times, and that set up a touchdown. So if you're able to do that, make the smart adjustments, I'm saying yeah. Now, when it comes to MVP awards, I think there's, there is going to be a little bit of a grace period for Lamar. Voter fatigue, I think, is definitely going to get in the way because Lamar is a unique specimen. There's, not a, there's, base, there's no quarterback like Lamar. There's little bits of athleticism. Josh Allen has it. Uh, Mahomes shows flashes. Jalen Hurts has it. Not like Lamar. Justin Fields, but not like Lamar. Not with the efficiency like Lamar has. So I do think Lamar eventually will make it to a championship. Make it to a championship is just a question of, does he have the skill around him, and who is he playing against? Because it really matters the competition you're up in. That's yeah. the biggest part. I worry that his best chance might have been last year. I, that's Had the Chiefs on the road. Yep. Got and, in the red zone that, that twice. That was the Chiefs' worst offense. Got in the red zone far. twice, was only behind by one touchdown. Turned the ball over twice. That hurts. One wasn't his fault. One was kind of a Hail Mary throw that I'm not going to fully pin on him. But I don't understand that throw. I it, mean, that it, was it was mistake. a bad decision. Yeah, I'm, bad I'm not going to say it wasn't. But, you know, I, I do think eventually because Lamar is too talented to say he'll never make it. Way too talented to say he'll never make it. Just like Josh Allen. Eventually he'll make it. I, I think, and, and this, this might be horrible to say, Mahomes is going to have an injury where he's going to miss significant amounts of time. Every quarter, every player does. I think it, it's it's unfair to say that uh, that just because a player is phenomenal, that he'll have no major injury, no injury that's going to knock him out for a significant amount of time. <clears throat> I feel like every quarterback has some kind of injury. Every top tier quarterback has had some injury where they've lost a decent amount of time. It doesn't need to be knocking him out of game. Just look at Joe Burrow to open the season, first four games. It's like, dude, we know you're not a hundred percent. Sit down, heal. You're costing your team a game, costing your team a couple games. So maybe it's that where it's a lingering injury. Something Jalen Hurts dealt with that too. It wasn't significant enough to knock him out of a game, but we could see that. Well, he's not running it, and he's limping off to the sideline after our QB scramble. That's not exactly the Jalen Hurts we like. He's not stepping into his deep throws as he did back in 2022 when they made it to the Super Bowl. So maybe it's something like that. But like I said, I, Lamar is way too talented to not make a Super Bowl. 
Winning, like Tom Brady said, making it's one thing. Winning it is something completely different. Because yeah. that, that, that takes in-game adjustments maybe after every quarter. Well, I think that's true in the a AFC or NFC championship games, too. Those Absolutely. are huge games as well. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.